Everyone talks about history as if there were only one kind of historical discourse, as if history was told from a single point of view. Why does this happen? I am Rodrigo Guim, an anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. What do you understand by history? Please comment below so I can enter into a conversation with you. If you believe that thinking is fundamental in your life and you think you can debate thought, please subscribe to this channel because that is our task here. Michel Foucault, in an article titled Return to History, tells how until the 19th century, historians' concern was, quote, to reconstruct a past of the great national ensembles by which industrial capitalist society was divided or, or tied together. History was a discipline by means of which the bourgeoisie showed, first, that its reign was only the result of a slow maturation, and that this reign was thus perfectly justified since it came from the mists of time. End of citation. Foucault shows how history is told from a point of view, which some say belongs to the winners, uh, and that this point of view was predominantly about time and the past. But, says Foucault, work on history today is done not just from this perspective, but also from the change and event in history. But then, how do we look at the past if there is not going to be one final, complete history of the past? And what is the difference in looking at history as made out of changes? That's what I want to talk about with you today, from the proposal of Foucault's genealogy. This is a dense text, because genealogy is far from being a consensus or proposing a method, and what I'm going to expose here is not a method either. It is very much an open field and a toolbox for thinking about social dynamics and how they are always partially understood by us. Foucault's genealogy is not a method in the scientific sense of the term, a closed system of, of rules of approach that guarantees returns in terms of a true and false dichotomy or else proves inadequate because of application failures, that is, shows the scientist as flawed in his approach. Foucauldian genealogy is not concerned with the scientific method as a univocal approach. Facts do not appear as facts in the positivist tradition, but, but as accidents, as Foucault says. Accidents that require partial interpretation and the cutting of events. It is a meticulous and patiently documentary work that seeks to give place through a careful reading of social cultural productions to events as part in processes of other events, where the retelling of history is not a search for beginnings, for what the genealogist finds at the beginning of events of things is not the inviolable identity of its origin, it is the dissension of other things. It is disparity. This is a citation from Foucault. Genealogy, then, is not this new method that will set us free and will finally come to the truth of history. Uh, there's no way it can do that. It doesn't want to do that. However, neither is it simply another method available that allows us different results. Genealogy is, at the same time, a search for an understanding of the multiplicity of the past, of how in the past cont contestations and accommodations and struggles form events, with a focus on the conditions of dispersion and the formation of the present in order to provide insights that can change our present. It is above all concerned with the present, while still being careful not to argue with the past as if it were what fully explains the present. The question for the genealogist 
is to open possibilities of life in the present. It is a work inherently positioned in the present time, though for that it seeks openings, for the present is relatively open and ultimately in incommensurable. Genealogy is not a final word on time, because we have no way of knowing all the agents of time, all that moves these agents of time. Social structures, political, cultural structures are as important as agencies of individuals and groups. In genealogy, there is no final explanation. The history of the present that it claims is not to correct the present, because such a, such a possibility assumes history as intentional, as having a purpose, and as such denounces a specific system of thought that Foucault called continuous history. Continuous history is still the dominant epistemological basis of Western societies and globalizing societies. In it, the orders of the same, the human as a universal being, and history as the univocal evolutionary line are the episteme of the dominant thought system. The thought of the other, of the radically different, has no place in this dominant thought, except as an other with potential for being the same as the self, another which lacks the identity of the self. To be other for the dominant uh, episteme is to have the potential for the same, it, or else it's not to exist at all. Continuous history, according to Foucault, is an episteme of our present. It marks thought in such a way as to render invisible any otherness that presents itself as radically different. The differences of thought, of modes of being and action, are in this system quickly replaced in the order of the same. That which in the dominant system of thought is other as an irreducible difference, as otherness that cannot be fully known, is made other from the dominant as non-being, cannot be existing. In the dominant thought in the West, the other is being or existing to the extent that it's identified with the same. Difference, the one that refuses to be identified as the same, is forced to do so or is annihilated or is, or is just silenced. Foucault writes, quote, making historical analysis the discourse of the continuous and making human consciousness the original subject of all historical development and all action are both sides of the same system of thought. In this system, time is conceived in terms of totalization and revolutions are never more than moments of consciousness." End of quote. So continuous history is uh, this system of thought that is dominant today that uh, regards history and also selves or uh, subjectivities as having an origin in consciousness. So everything that uh, plays out in the world has an origin in some consciousness or has to have an origin uh, that can be traced back, could be traced back to an originality, to an origin and this origin residing in consciousness. Genealogy shows how this is just one of the many practices of being created of the modes of uh, production of subjectivity, collectivity and history created, and that this mode of production of subjectivity has its production and, and its limits, uh, where the other is, and relies on the production of others to continue to produce itself. Edward Said, the Palestinian post-colonial thinker, for example, relating Foucault's trajectory to colonialism, showed how the East was created as an other of the West, where what is said of the East shows more about the West itself with its colonial discourses and practices than about the East itself, uh, which is merely an imagined space, space of the colonizer, bringing together the most diverse cultures and territories in a great other which is created uh, and justifies 
also at the same time European domination. Against the dominant mode of understanding being as metaphysical essence and social practices as unilinear and in historical progression or evolution, genealogy sheds light on what is forgotten, erased, rewritten, silenced, annihilated by the dominant history. In this sense, genealogy is also the practice of destabilizing the dominance of systems of thought. It seeks to show how, in looking for origins, all we find are copies of copies, as Friedrich Nietzsche stated. Foucault recovers Nietzsche's practice and insists, quote, Genealogy does not resemble the evolution of a species and does not map the fate of a people. On the contrary, to follow the complex course of descent is to keep the passing events in their proper dispersion. It is to identify the accidents, the minute deviations, or conversely, the complete reversals, the errors, the misjudgments, and the wrong calculations that give rise to those things that continue to exist and have value to us. It is to discover that truth or being is not at the root of what we know and what we are, but the exteriority of accidents. Foucault's genealogy was interested in articulating the impressions of history on bodies and events as they take shape through their associations with bodies. Bodies as the self is never a unity, always in a state of dynamic game of domination. Genealogy seeks to map the terrain of these games on bodies, not to provide a final word on power or domination, but quite the opposite, to allow for a thoughtful and critical analysis of the problem of subjection and modes of subjectivation, which is a term by Foucault. Subjectivation is used by Foucault as a term for processes of the production of subjects through practices of self and through practices of governmentality, of the government of others. For Foucault, then, a system of differential effects of domination forms bodies, uh, effects that move with history. Foucault provides no resolution to forms of domination and oppression because the understanding he came up with is that it is only, uh, genealogies are only one possible approach. Uh, a genealogy is always one genealogy possible among others. He is interesting in relating the entanglement of discourses and practices in their links with other discourses and practices through power relations, the materiality of bodies and events as relations, as processes rather than as self-contained and opaque. It thus distances itself from the dominant modes of present-day scientific, political, social, or historical discourses that invest in the pursuit of truth, while at the same time Genealogy appears as the foray into the presence of multiplicity in discourses that claim unity, not as a task for its own sake, but as a necessary task if we start from the understanding of the present world as deeply global, globalized, as becoming westernized in its dominant systems of thought that continually use linear and continuous history and its form of truth production as modes of subjectivation and the ways in which power relations are naturalized and capable of functioning. Foucault began his studies of historical formations with what he called archaeology. With archaeology, Foucault stated his difference from behavioral history or the history of mentalities. Uh, Gilles Deleuze, in the book Foucault, The Historical Formations, says, quote, in other words, Foucault's great historical principle is outlined here. Every historical formation sees what it can see. Every historical formation sees everything it can see. And correlatively, every historical formation says all it can say. And he continues, Foucault does not make a history of mentalities or a history of behaviors. He rises to the conditions of each age that make both behaviors and mentalities possible. In other words, he works as a philosopher 
and not as a historian. Seeing and speaking determine conditions to the extent that seeing goes beyond the fields of visibility and speaking towards the regimes of utterances. There is no isomorphism between seeing and speaking, that is, between the visible and the utterable. That is, there is no compliance. Compliance means a common form of, or a two-way correspondence between the two forms. In other words, we never see what we talk about and we never talk about what we see. End of quote. The danger of genealogy to the established power system is that it generates our need to possibly rethink all our institutions, our available dominant subjectivities, our knowledge producing practices, and their ability to normalize us. Resistance to normalization requires a genealogical approach to history because there is simply li little information available that recognizes the fundamental flaws in any attempt to involve normalization in order to promote social change. Genealogy recognizes the impossibility of purity in discourse as well as in social action and institutions. It does not seek to provide a safe haven or a domination-free viewpoint from which to view domination from the outside. There is no such thing. In fact, quite the opposite. Foucault shows how domination is even more present precisely in attempts to resist it on its own terms. Every discourse of resistance reproduces what it critiques in one way or another. Genealogy then becomes a strategic disposition of critique based on selective ruptures of historical continuities and discontinuities. The selection process, one can only imagine, has to do with the attention being paid to the present contingencies of what is under scrutiny, plus the genealogist's ability to bring the game of dominations into a relationship with the present. In genealogy, there is only perspective. No one has as purpose a total mapping of the field of power relations and knowledges because there is no such university, univocality of power, relations and knowledges. As relations of the world that are, they are always alive, always in motion, escaping any mapping or totalizing record. Therefore, the task of providing archaeologies of knowledge becomes indispensable, because it is only through them, with their transitions and contradictions, and internal multiplicities that the genealogists can bring the present uh, to this game between contingencies. This game, the genealogist can only hope, will be one that will allow others to rethink their, their thought systems as systems. Genealogy thus claims a relationship with deconstruction, with the disruption of the scientification of everything that impedes justice in the present as the ethical responsibility of knowledge production. Not so that this practice puts us within the true or the righteous, but because of a practice of the world and the self that wishes to dispel the power of normalization. Genealogy as a practice implies fundamental doubts about the possibilities of liberation, However, with a corresponding hyperactivism of interruptions of what is constructed as truth, as art, language, culture, science, nation, and history. It operates through a Nietzschean violence because words do not say actions voluntarily. They must be brought to it. And knowledge is never transparent, always a play of light and shadow. Intervention in dominant knowledge conditions different arrangements of domination and never total freedom. Uh, we go from dominance to dominance. And the question is, which ones can improve the lives of those we care about? What we can hopefully achieve is a rearrangement of the game of dominations and the violence that follows them, aiming for improvements for us and for others that are important to us. Playing with domination, the genealogist never frees itself 
from it, is never able to pose the final question. In fact, doubts its existence and tries to understand it itself as always speaking from within, never without the game of dominations. Within dominance, genealogy demands rigor in witnessing difference and particularity. It requires that in finding dominations, one must travel they, their paths and their possible effects on people's lives in the present. It requires a commitment to live with discernment. This is why it is also a practice of the self. It requires this practice of the self. Uh, so relations between us and dominations can be witnessed. This practice does not include the, po the possibility of full knowledge. In fact, it makes the partiality of access to reality what one needs to witness. Witnessing is not done in a vacuum. The genealogist needs others, only talks with others, through others, in their present resistances and dominations, so as to make the genealogy a struggle for justice, not the truth of justice. It is only through others and through testimony and witnessing that at least some ability to discern injustice can arise. This testimony can include what makes people live, fight, resist, mourn, feast, celebrate or die. This forces us to understand the production of histories in sociality, thought and legacy as necessary in alliance with other people. The genealogist does not discuss texts for themselves or social practices for themselves. Genealogy as well as deconstruction of Jacques Derrida is a practice of justice. As a practice of justice, it does not want closure, it, the permanence of relations between texts, text, visibilities, the self, the other, and the world. It must continually reflect on its effects as they circulate, as the world moves, as the self is continually rethought in its struggle for justice with its allies. Genealogy seeks to understand the complicities of forms of domination with one another, their strategies of dispersion and entanglement with one another, the ways in which they can blend with one another and also with forms of resistance. Genealogy also shows what is present even when it seems that history has completely changed. For genealogy, history is always changing but never completely for that would be a claim to truth above history itself. Genealogy is the task of bringing knowledge of history to the present as a struggle for justice without the ultimate truth. Well, people, now I need you to comment, ask on Facebook or YouTube so I can answer you in the next videos. This is an immersion in Nietzsche and Foucault. It is a video conversation where the questions brought by you I bring to the debate and also bring more questions. See you next Thursday.